Hello everyone. This is the class ECE 418, the statistical signal processing. Welcome. Uh, today we will keep working on the linear equations. How to solve linear equations? All right. Okay. ECE 418. This is the second week. Friday's class linear equation linear equations uh, last time we have discussed uh, how many different cases can we have right this is a notes last time for a linear equation ax equal to b where a is a matrix x is a vector of unknowns b are uh, B is a vector with some given values. Right. Now we have several cases. Check the rank of A and A, B. Then you have two cases, small, small or equal. A can, A, uh, the rank of A cannot larger than this side because you see, this is larger, right? This is larger. So the rank of A either equal to or smaller than rank A and B. So we have two cases. If if he is smaller, rank A smaller than rank A B, then there's no solution. If they have same rank, then we know we have a solution. Uh, but maybe maybe more than one, right? Okay, we have two cases. If number of unknowns equal the equal to the rank of A, then we have unique solution. So this is the case actually unknown number of unknowns equal to rank of a as well as equal to rank of a b and then all these three they are same then we have unique solution if unknowns number of unknowns larger than rank of a then we have infinite solutions we have infinite solutions so totally we have three cases for the unique solution case uh, we can solve it just by the a inverse times b, right? The formula we already know it very well. And uh, when we have no solution, then we can find the solution which provide us uh, the smallest arrow. Okay. Now let's keep working on this part. Consider consider equation a x plus b, uh, ax equal to b, and suppose that is the case without a solution. Without a solution, that means rank of a smaller than rank of a and b. We have this. Suppose we have this, then there are, there are no exact solution. But we can find x to minimize uh, uh, minimize a x minus b the length the length between a x and b. Now, what will be the answer? Okay, uh, we have several ways, two ways at least, to find the answer. And the answer will be, we can have this. We can have this one, a Hermitian times a. Now, in your case, this is just transpose. You can say it is just transpose. But uh, this formula can be applied for any kind of a. Even a contain complex numbers. A H A X equal to A H B. We have this. So the solution of this one uh, will give you a, give you a X, which minimizes the length of this. Okay, so you you still need to solve the equation, but. Uh, 
solve a different equation you solve this one so this one then actually you have two cases uh, x equal to a h a inverse times a h b is a unique solution but this is not the solution of the this is one this is two unique solution of two yeah, unique solution of two we also call it as a, a least least the square arrow solution or just the least squares solution of the first equation okay is this one but this we need a condition A H A inverse exist. And we have this one. If we do not have the inverse matrix, that means the the rank of these matrix is somehow smaller than the unknowns of X. Then that is a that will be the this case. The rank of A is smaller than the number of unknowns. Then you have infinite solution. So this equation, you still have the chance to get uh, this equation. You still have chance to get uh, infinite solution or infinite solution. All right. So this is the result. Then, okay. How can how can we get this? How can we get this? Let me show you. Now, how can we get? How can we get the, the? Yeah, we can. How can we get this one? Right. We start from here. We want this one, the smallest value. Then we can have this. Why we can have this? To get two. We have two methods. Measure one. We check x i of a x minus b equal to zero. I will put a square. Then I don't need a square root. This one equal to zero, right? The length is a summation of this is a vector. Right? This is a vector. Then the every element takes square to summation takes square root. We get the length. We get the norm, uh, but you can have a square square root. It's hard to calculate, so I put a square here. Then this part it is a summation of square terms, no square root. Then we take derivative. We want this equal to zero. Solve it. Right. I were equal to uh, where x equal to suppose this is x one to some x n, and this i will be one two until n. Right. We solve this. Then what is this one? We say u right. Suppose u is a vector, that will be u one square plus u two square plus until some u n square square root. I put square then here's just a square summation of squares. And then we can write it in this way. It is a u1, u2, un times u1, u2, un. Right. A row times a column. We get this one, you see? We times them element by element, then do summation. We have this one. So the square of the norm can be written as a vector, a row vector times a column vector. The elements are same. Just one is a row, one is a column. So here's the same thing. This part a x minus b or equal to I need a b support here b is a column vector, so column vector is here. A x minus b this is column vector is here. And then we turn it 
turns it to be a row vector, so it's a transpose. I put it in the front. This is a x minus b. I do a transpose. Now we transpose to a, from column to a row, right? From column to a row. And uh, we want this works for both complex number and the real number, so we use h here. H here. x1 xn h equal to x1 conjugate until xn conjugate like this uh, make multiplication when you times together times together x h times x will be x1 x1 conjugate plus until xn xn conjugate and x times x conjugate is what? If x x1 equal to a plus bj, then x1 conjugate, that will be a minus bj. And then x1 times x1 conjugate will equal to a squared plus b squared. Yeah? So for complex cases, we times in this way. Then we still have some square terms of square terms, right? Each square is a, a real part of a square, then then the then the image part of x takes square, and all of these squares to summation. So it is still a square of the length, square of length. This is also length, right? Square of the length takes square root is length. Yeah. So when they, they are real numbers, then you do not have this b part term just a then the word is as same as normal okay so the length this uh here square the norm square can be written in this way a row vector times a column vector uh, they coming from same both from this column vector but the row vector we need a conjugate here okay now what is this I multiply them together I put h inside I get x h a h minus b h times a x minus b. Here we have another formula we always use a times b, no matter they are vectors or matrix or what kind of size of them, you do transpose, you do transpose or equal to a, a b transpose times a transpose. Yeah, you need a so when you times these two together to transpose, you can do transpose on each then times, but you need to change the order. Change the order. Here's B times A. Here's A times B. You change the order. Okay. okay. So here's the same thing. AX transpose with conjugate. Here's also transpose with conjugate. Because the transpose, you need to change this order. X in front, A in the back. Uh, conjugate is still conjugate. All right. Then these give us x h a h times a x minus x h a h b minus b h a x minus b h b. Okay. Then we take derivative. Take derivative. You can see. Uh, okay, all these are vector or matrix. They are constant. Here's constant. After take derivative, you get zero. And these two term, you have x, some number times x. Of course, all the x, x1 until xn. When you take derivative, all the other x terms, they go to zero. Only xi term, you keep the coefficient here. You keep coefficient here. And this one, you have when you multiply them together, you will have some x i square x x i squares and x i times x j terms. When you take derivative, uh, you know square term like a two uh, x square take derivative, you only have x. Uh, x i x j take derivative, you have x j left. Right here's a derivative for x i uh, x i. Okay. So by this way, if you do all the detailed calculations, you can find uh, 
this one equal to zero and uh, this one equal to zero this one this one and this one this two okay three and uh, this one this one this this two we can have a h a x minus uh, minus b uh, not this one uh, minus this one a h b equal to zero we can have this we can have this we perform the derivative on here and let them equal to zero for all the i's and then do some simplify you can get this one you can get this get this one this is what do we want this is what do we want all right uh, let me see yeah we want this one we want this one we can have this uh, I don't perform the details if you are interested you can do it uh, no problem but of course you need to code some time because this is a n by n square matrix times x times xh this is quadratic form remember last time we introduced this is quadratic form and these contain some xi with some coefficients from a and b this is the same thing and there are some constant this one doesn't matter but uh, these three terms you need a lot of calculations yeah. but the result is just this one okay method two yeah I don't go go inside the, the details you just t I just tell you the idea how to get it the idea is just take directly equal to zero then you have the minimal point right okay method two this is a ge geometry method geometry method you have remember the graph last time I gave you uh, not this, sorry. Um, which one? This one. This is the space of X. Here is the space of B. And by, by times A, uh, X go to A times X. We will have a uh, part of it yeah. this one all of these go inside this space of B but cannot occupy the whole space just contain uh, just uh, inside it and B is somewhere here outside this range so we do not have solution any X were not equal to B right no no X were equal to B so no solution but then you can check for any X here you have a X then you have distance here right you have distance and the minimal one will be here this one is the smallest shortest smallest length right uh, smallest length this is, 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 is this one and here will be 90 degree right this is smallest okay we use use this feature with this feature this is 90 degree then we can we can know you see b uh, a x minus b this is orthogonal the meaning is orthogonal right uh, you this represent orthogonal orthogonal with what with all the vectors inside this space so this is a, I say this is just the a times all of these x uh, I see a x for all x we have this we have this then based on this property we can also find this one uh, you need to uh, know some yeah we still need some calculations uh, from this space you can have depending on the this is uh, like Rn Rn then you have a base you have all the vector can be written as 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 right they are the kind of uh, uh, the the access right you have access different every access you have a frame of the access and this 
all this you choose x you do not need all the x you just choose x equal to these these vectors and you want this one orthogonal with a times this vector this is ei so i want a x minus b orthogonal with a ei i equal to one two here's if this is n then this is n until n like this and orthogonal of two vectors can be written as the inner product equal to zero the inner product a x minus b and a e i equal to zero can be written this way yeah i don't give detail for this if you're interested you can read the textbook you can find this then from here you can solve you still get this one and actually the result of this is quite I think almost the same as this one here's a, this one take derivative equal to zero here's the inner product of these two equal to zero and it looks almost the same and then the result is also the same yeah yeah here's a derivative equal to zero here's the inner product inner product equal to zero inner product equal to zero yeah. so we have this one we have this one so this is the formula uh, this is the result here yeah result here then based on this you can use this one to find the solution if we have unique solution if you have infinite solution okay we have a method according to infinite solution cases let's go to next topic This is one. Okay. Two. A x equal to b. In the case. Uh, in the case, infinite solution is here. Is here. So this is a rank a equal to rank a and b, and unknowns larger than rank a. So this is the case number of unknowns larger than rank of A and rank of A equal to rank of A plus B at B this is the case now how to solve it how to solve it uh, this is the case like this I still use a is a graph to show so this is the space of x and here is a space of b you have a kind of things like this all of these will go to single point b all the x inside these this is kind of subspace. The subspace. This is subspace. Uh, subspace. Right. Every element in this subspace, every x inside this subspace, will go to b. So you have infinite solutions, and we want to find this space. We want to find this space. Then we use uh, another similar space. Suppose this is zero zero and the zero here we will also have a similar space will go to zero go to zero now we call this as um, yeah, I just gave the name right? I gave a letter you can use any letter here just suppose I use a K K all the X inside K will go to zero and all the X into here will go to B all right and what are the relation between them so this is a zero this is also zero of course zero because this is a x go to a x right if zero x is zero then x must zero must go to zero so zero will be a point in x from zero you connect zero with some some x any x you pick any x here then all the other x or other, other x this is x1 for uh, xa 
this is x this is x a maybe you have x b x c right x a x a and here you also have uh, some value in k and this x a is just this value plus uh, I say this is a uh, x p x a x a equal to x p plus uh, I say this is x h we have this we have this so the thing is if we can determine what is x p and we can determine what is k then we know this part so the result is like this or possible we have infinite right or possible solutions of I say this is a equation one right? equation one right equation one yeah. all possible solutions of one equal to xp plus or possible solution solutions of a x equal to zero right this k will go to zero right? a x equal to zero the result like this x p any um, any value but uh, you know you, you need to find it so you any particular solution of one yeah, we have we have these two we have these two okay now how to solve it uh, I use an example to explain it okay the idea is just like like this this is the case we have infinite solution actually last time I gave a example with infinite solution right this one, infinite solution. yeah this one this one gave us infinite solution a equal to 1 1 2 2 1 negative 1 and b equal to 2 4 0 this is a uh, oh no no sorry this is a unique solution. Uh, do I have infinite solution examples? Oh, we will have this one. This is infinite solution. It's uh, quite simple. Uh, okay, I just use it to explain how it works. All right, x1 plus x2 equal to 2, and x2 x1 plus 2 x2 equal to 4. This is example. This is an example with infinite solution. Actually, it is just one equation. Now we know a equal to one one two two, and b is two four. Then we have a rank of a is one, right? Obviously, right? These two lines. You times two, you get a second. Right? Same thing. And uh, it is also the rank of A and B put together 1 1 2 and 2 2 4 right okay so we have this then we know uh, the unknown the number of unknown equal to 2 so the number of unknowns larger than rank of A Which is uh, also rank of a b. Okay. So we want to solve it. We you need two steps. Step one: find all possible solutions of a x equal to zero. Now you do not use b. B just use zero. That is uh, 
x1 plus x2 equal to 0 and 2x1 plus 2x2 equal to 0. Right, this is this one. Okay, then this is a like this is a, this is a b, then b. I just use a is enough, right? b give nothing. Actually, b minus 2 times a, you get 0. 0 equal to 0, right? It's nothing. You, you cancel. b can be canceled. So we have x1 equal to negative uh, x2. That's it. You can pick any value on x2. x2, any. Then x1 is determined by x2. So you have one equation. So finally, you can only have like one restriction on one of the unknowns. Now is a, we we put the restriction on no restricted unknown is x1. The x2 could be any. Then like x1, x2 can be uh, x1 must be x2 negative x2, and x2 could be any. And I move x2 in the front, there will be x2 times negative 1 and 1. Right? x2 times negative 1 and 1. If you look at it in the graph, x1, x2, x1 could be negative 1, and x2 is 1. So it is this one. Times x2. So for different x2, every point on this line will be a solution. Will be a solution. Actually, this line is just that k. That k, right? I said we have a k will go to zero. Now this side here, this part, it is just the x1, x2, right? Two dimensional. And every this line, this line will go to here zero. So this is just that k. This is just that k. And uh, usually people do not use unknown here. So we can write this way. x1, x2 equal to some r, negative 1 and 1 for any r. This is the solution. Solution of uh, this is a, this is what I have. A, Number five. This is one, this is two. Oh, I didn't give any number. Okay, here I just use H. There's a name on it. The solution of AX equal to zero. I see this is H. H. Okay, this is H. Means the homogeneous equation of what? The name of this. You replace the constant part, right? Ax, the uh, Ax plus, uh, equal to b, this is what? You replace this b by zero, you get the homogeneous equation of the original one. The original equation you replace b by zero, you get the homogeneous equation. And this one is the solution of the this one is the solution of the homogeneous equation. Okay, step two find the particular solution. It is uh, a x equal to b, right? Actually, we can have one. We can have one solution. X p, uh, not x p. Uh, yeah, x p. X p equal to just uh, a h times a a h inverse times b. That's it. That's it. This is a formula. This is a formula. You can just use this. So why we have this? 
a times x p equal to a a h times a a h inverse b. Right? They cancel. This is b. This is just b. Yeah. And we have name on it. This f this this particular solution is x p is the uh, shortest. Shortest, uh, shortest one among our solutions. XP is called let me see, it's a minimal knot. Minimum norm solution. So this solution has the, the minimal norm. Minimal norm. We know we have infinite solution, right? Infinite solution. Uh, a particular solution plus any uh, plus all the homogeneous solutions. And the particular solution could be any solution. And among any of them, and among all of them, the one with minimal norm is this XP. It is XP. Of course, here you need to pick A. Uh, you cannot use original A. You need to pick A. Uh, for the rank okay. like here we know oh this is rank yeah yeah this rank is one rank is one rank is one so here a you you cannot use the original one because one only one equation is enough so you you pick one if here's rank two you pick two from here if here's three you pick three from here no matter how many here maybe here like you have ten equations but rank is three then you pick three from here you pick three from here all right but make sure that three has a full rank has a full rank yeah okay now yeah this this formula can be applied anywhere not just for this example all right now a use just one and one and the B use one 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 two we use the first first one you can also use two two four is also fine all right I use one one and the two just two then the particular solution equal to a h a h is a uh, uh, is a transpose right so it's a con conjugate with transpose but here's the real number just transpose so a transpose is this and uh, a times a transpose a times a transpose with the inverse times b b is just one number a one by one vector this is one and one here when we time them together I get two two inverse times two okay this is one so the, it is just the uh, it is just one. Uh, one one times one. It is one and one. Alright. Now we have our solution. This is step two. This is step you can say this is step three. You you state what is the final answer. A x equal to B has solutions. Our solutions xp plus the homogeneous solution is alpha times alpha times negative one and one right alpha is any any number any number okay so we we solve it we solve it and uh, yeah you can use a graph to see x1 x2 what are these it cross one to one point and for different alpha plus plus uh, minus alpha in the x and plus alpha in the second right so like alpha if uh, here's one here's one if alpha is one then in x one direction you need minus one here's a plus plus one 
Right. X2 is the plus one, you get this. So it is a straight line like this. Straight line like this. All the point, all the point looks like this. They form this straight line. It's a straight line. This straight line. And uh, this one by times A, this line will go to this point. The whole line will go to this point. And go to this point. All right. This is one example, um, which you, we can study a more complex example. All right, a larger one. A larger one. Uh, I use a, okay example. I have a now is a, a one. Two, make one, 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 two, three, zero. Yes, three by three. And B equal to two, one, three. Alright. We want to solve A, X equal to B. How to do it? Okay, first of all, we check the rank. So, step one. Check the rank. You have we have A and the B. They are one, two, negative one and the two. Then one, one, one and the one. Two, three, zero and the three. Then we do the elementary transformation. I want the first line to be one followed by zeros. So I need to erase this one, erase this two. Okay, so second line will replace by second line minus two times first line. And third line will change to be third line minus two of first line. Oh, sorry. The second line just, uh, just second line minus first line, that will be fine. I don't need no tools necessary here. Okay, this give us. I keep the first line, right? First row. And second row is a second minus first. So one minus one zero. One minus negative two. Um, one minus two is negative one. One minus negative two. I get a two. Am I good? Two. Yeah. And one minus two. I get one. And this third one minus one times two, so two minus two I get zero. Three minus four I get negative one. Zero minus negative two is two. And three minus four I get negative one. Oh, this one is one minus two. Sorry, this is negative one. Actually, here you can see the third line is the same as the first line, so you can just cancel it, right? Yeah, you can also work step by step. You change this line here to be one, and make make this this part to be one followed by zeros. Similar with this, right? This part we are done. One followed by zeros. Then we want this part to be one followed by zeros. So this negative one, I need times negative on it. So, negative 1 times 2 this is the first option, operate the first transformation. Second transformation, just subtract these two, right? So, it's a 3 were replaced by 3 minus 2. Okay, the first line, we just keep it, nothing changed. Second line, we times the negative on it. Third line, we do a subtraction, you totally zeros. Alright, then you can check, can we work any more? Now, for this part is one zero zero, it's fine. This part is one zero, it's fine. If you want, here you were supposed this to be one and followed by zero, 
but here is, it is zero so you can do nothing now then you check this if there is uh, some unknown va uh, non-zero value you can also try to do some work here but here is also zero so nothing because whole line zero there's nothing else you want to work on it so we are done and then we can know the rank rank of A is what? is two okay, this part according to rank rank of A this is for A and the whole thing is for rank A and B it is also two right I have two non-zero uh, rows then this is zero so both are two okay now we know we have a solution because these two ranks they are same and also how many solutions we have infinite because we have this is order three right on those are three x equal to x1 x2 x3 x3 and number of unknowns On those is three, so we have infinite solution, uh, infinite solutions. We have infinite solutions. Then we try to find the infinite solutions. It will combine. Uh, it will be combined of several parts. This is a uh, step to find the homogeneous solution. Okay, now we have we have several parts we can use. We can start from here. Start from here. Find the homogeneous solution. Let this be zero. And this part, uh, the coefficient of the equation, and we can try to solve it. We can also start from here. Actually, we get this one, right? So we can use this one. We can use this one, but replace b part as zeros. B part as zeros. So consider this part: one, two, negative one, zero, one, two, uh, negative two. Okay. This part. This part is new a times x1, x2, x3 equal to this part. But uh, for homogeneous case, this part we can just use zero, right? This is this is just zeros, zero and zero. Can see this? All right, almost done. Uh, we can work, you know, element by element if you times them out. You can also work as a matrix way. It is one, two, zero, one times x1 x2 you separate these as two part sep sep separate these also as with two part the first part times first part plus second part times x3 equal to zero zero so you get one two zero one times x1 x2 equal to you just move these to the other side negative one negative two now is a x3 times 1 and 2 okay. okay then x1 x2 equal to 1 2 0 1 inverse times x3 times 1 and 2 so it is x3 times the inverse inverse of these it is 1 over 1 minus 0 right the determinant times you change these two elements, but they are same, nothing changed. And change the sign, this is negative two, zero. And times one and two. So this is x3, one over one, okay, it is just one, times one, nothing changed. And this one times this one. So one and negative two times one and two. I have one minus four is negative three. And zero, one, I get two. So we have x1, x2, x3. This is what we want. We have three unknowns. They are okay. This uh, 
negative 3x3, 2x3. So here is a negative 3x3, 2x3, and x3. It is x3 times negative 3, 2, 1. Yeah, I have this one. I have this one, and uh, you really, you know here x3 could be anything. x3 could be anything, but uh, usually people do not want to use unknown here, so we write it x1, x2, x3 equal to some alpha times negative three to one alpha is any any number alpha is any number. So we have the homogeneous solution. This is a homogeneous solution. Okay. Homogeneous solution. If you want, you put the edge here. Yeah, low case is also fine. Yeah. And then, next step, we need to find the particular solution. Find the particular solution. Uh, we can just use a minimal norm solution, right? Minimal norm solution. We can use the minimal norm solution. Xp equal to. Okay, I need this this a. A and B, I need to use this one. A and B is a B is that uh, B is here two and one, two and one. Right. This is a new A. This is this is A. This is B, not an original one. Uh, you can also use original one. You need to pick two lines. According to the rank, right? Rank is two. You need to pick two lines. Yeah. But now you just use these two lines. That will be fine. You already get these two lines, right? You just use these two lines. So now is a uh, AH. It is one, two, negative one, zero, one, negative two. H times A and AH. Inverse times b. Did this one. Then uh, okay, step by step. This is a edge. Uh, it's a real number, so just a transpose. So it's a first line now is the first row. Second line now is second row. This is a edge. And the inside is a one two negative one zero one negative two times transpose of this is 1, 2, negative 1, and 0, 1, negative 2. Inverse times 2, 1. Okay, copy it. Times these together. 1, 2, negative 1. 1, 2, negative 1. So I get 1 and 4 and 1. It's a 6. 1, 2, negative 1. 0, 1, negative 2. I get 0, 2, negative uh, positive 2 0 2 2 right 0 2 2 is 4 and then 0 1 negative 2 1 2 negative 1 I have 0 2 negative 2 you see same way this one right this also 4 right 0 2 2 is 4 usually this part will be a not usually always always this part should be a the result should be a symmetric matrix and now the last, the last element will be 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, negative 2, negative 2, okay. It's a 0, 1, and 4 is 5. See, symmetrically, right? It's 4 and 4. Then inverse times 2 and 1. Okay, then the inverse matrix. Yeah, this, this part just copy. Inverse of these will be 1 over 30 minus 16, right? 5, 6, 30, 4, 4, 6, 10. Times, change the location of these two elements, 5 and 6, and change the sign before the negative, negative, right? Positive tend to be negative. 
and 2 and 1. Okay, I can move the constant in the front. This is 1 over what, 14. Right? 13 minus 13 minus 16, I get 14. And uh, 1, 0, 2, 1, negative 1, negative 2, I just keep it. And times these two, I have 5, 2 is 10, minus 4, 10 minus 4, 6. Then 4, 2 is 8, negative 8 plus 6, negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. All right. 1, 14, I copy it. Okay, then do the multiplication. 1, 0, 6, negative 2 is a 6. Then 2, 6, minus 2. 2, 6 is 16, uh, 12. 2, 6 is 12. 12 minus 2 is 10. The negative 1, 6 is 6. Minus 4. 6 minus 4. Or negative 6 and a positive 4. is a negative 6 and positive 2. is a negative 2. And uh, I can put it inside. There will be 6 over 7. 3 over 7. Then uh, 5 over 7. Negative one over seven. All right. This is a. Is this good number? Okay. Thirteen minus sixteen. I have twelve. Uh, I have fourteen. Right? I have fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. So we have this one. XP. This one. Then. This is a conclusion. Right, you have the final result. The solution solutions, not just one solution. Solutions are particular solution, this is a three over seven, five over seven, negative one over seven, plus homogeneous solution is this one. So plus R, negative 3, 2, 1. R could be any number. Any number. Alright? Yeah. So now we are done. We have the full feature, right? The, the overall, how to solve a linear equation. Not just that special case, you can use A inverse times B. A inverse times B. That is a special case when the the uh, equation has unique solution and also in the given equations there are no you know no useful lines yes yeah, so like this example here I have three equations but one of it is useless right I have three equations uh, where is it? It's here. right this one actually give us three equations three equations but uh, only two equations are necessary right? you can remove any of it use another two. Yeah, you get the same answer. You can get the same answer, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, then that's all for today. And, uh, okay, this is Friday. See you next week. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend.